Hello ninjas, and welcome to the Coda Dojo. I hope everyone's doing well today. We're going to be uh, making space invaders. So as you can see, my space invaders are bats. I quite like the way this looks actually. I like the way the different rows are different, which is exactly how Space Invaders does it. So as you can see, we've got control of this rocket ship. It can move uh, left and right, um, and it can also fire at these blocks of Space Invaders and they behave like Space Invaders. So they wait until one of them touches the edge and then they move down and then they come a little bit lower. And then, once you get rid of one block of space invaders, a new block of space invaders arrives. And each time this happens, you go up one level, and the game gets a little bit harder. They move a bit faster. So you can see, you've got these, how they, they're moving left and right. There's also a few cool little effects, like they flash white just before they get shot. Um, and we'll see what happens if one of them touches me. And what should happen, come on, hurry up, is not quite, not quite. Yep, yeah, game stops. So that's the game that we're going to be making. So this one shouldn't take too long. We are going to need to do it in more than one part. The first part is going to be um, uh, just coding the rocket ship and the bullets and the next part will be um, the bats though what we might do is break that up depending on how complicated we're going to get with the bats uh, the space invaders because there's a bit of code a fair bit of code for the, the space invaders but it's all broken up so we might do it bit by bit by bit to get the basics working and then maybe build on that you know having extra levels and that kind of thing and who knows depending because I've been wanting to do a boss battle on one of these for a long time we might even do a boss battle to round things out depending on how we go so as always because this is a live stream for the first few minutes oh there's a cat in the background uh, for the first few minutes um, I always just do this sort of introduction just so that there's enough time for everyone to arrive hello Aiden how's it going I'm getting it right aren't I I hope you're keeping well Aiden um, and I am working on that uh, Battle Cats game as well that you uh, wanted wanted us to make on the stream. Um, it'll take a bit of time to make sure it's ready to go. But after this, after um, uh, the Space Invaders series, which I think will be a three part series, we'll see how we go. Um, we're going to we're going to do that one next. Should be a lot of fun. Um, so if you are tuned in live on the stream, um, make sure that you can uh, save uh, and share your project um, on the website. If you want me to help you out with it, if you're into any problems, uh, remind me of what your scratch name is so I can search you up, look for your project, as long as it's shared and saved. Um, and then I will be able to uh, look at your project and we can solve what's going wrong with it together. Um, so as always, if you are live in chat, make sure that you are being positive and encouraging and being cool to everyone. Um, and don't be alarmed if there's some latency. If you ask something in chat and it takes a little bit of time for the video to show you what I'm saying in response, don't worry, there's usually a bit of a delay there. Uh, that's just the nature of streaming. All right, well, that's about five minutes. We should be able to uh, make a start on the game, I think. Um, so um, I'm going to, so everyone get yourself nice and comfortable. Uh, make sure that you're ready for some coding. Open up a new Scratch project. I'm going to move this across so that it's going to be my notes. All right. Okay. So let's start with the coding, shall we? Um, so what we need to do is we need to, first of all, uh, we need to get rid of this cat because we don't want this cat. Um, so everyone uh, move your mouse over to where you've got this cat saying Sprite 1 in the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, just 
click and then once you select it in blue you should have this little X button over a trash can in the top right corner of that and click that to delete the cat. Um, Aiden says, you remember me, of course I remember you, Aiden. Aiden um, comes to one of our physical coder dojos, uh, or did come to them when, we're, when they were still physical. All right, so everyone, um, now go to the bottom right corner, um, click on that little cat face where, where you hover over it to choose a sprite. We're gonna do this first of all for the rocket ship. Um, so type in rocket and you'll find the rocket ship comes up and then we're going to make a uh, we might as well click on choose a sprite again bottom right corner click on choose a sprite and then you can in fact the bat's right there isn't it you can just click on the bat so you can obviously change the graphics for your game um, later um, and you can import graphics, pixel art, that kind of thing, or even draw your own graphics if you want. Changing the graphics is very easy. Um, in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a nice backdrop. So go to the bottom right corner where it says choose a backdrop, that little round button there with a picture of mountains. And you can choose whichever backdrop you like, but I'm just going to choose a stars backdrop. Ooh, the galaxy is quite nice. No, I'll keep it simple. Stars. All right, so we've got our rocket ship. We've got our bat. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to program our rocket ship first, and then we're going to program the bullets. Um, all right, so uh, let's click on, make sure you've clicked on the rocket ship in the bottom right corner, the sprite window, and then go to the top left corner, make sure you've got, um, actually, we're gonna change the costumes first. So top left corner, look for where it says costumes. So you'll be able to see now on the left all the different costumes of this rocket ship. And we're going to make it so that it's cycling through all of these different costumes so that it looks like it's flying and moving through the air. But you'll notice that one of them is the rocket ship E, and that one kind of doesn't really fit with the others. It doesn't have a flame coming out of out of the bottom. So on the left side, where you can see I've got my mouse, click on rocket ship E, and click on that little X um, trash can symbol in the top right corner of that little uh, rocket ship E button, and that will delete rocket ship E. All right, so everyone now go to the top left corner and click on code. So now um, we're going to put some code into our rocket ship. So first of all, let's uh, make it animate, um, like we were, like I was just saying. So everyone, click on events, the yellow category on the left. That's events. Then look at the very top, and you'll see when green flag clicked. Drag that out. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see it. Drag it out into the middle of your screen where you're putting all your code for your rocket ship and then um, go to control the orange category on the left and look for forever drag out that forever and put it right underneath when green flag clicked now look for wait one second drag out that wait one second and put it inside the forever and then finally hello we've got a cat on the stream um, we're going to go, we want to change the costume. We want it, the, it, we want our rocket ship to always go to the next costume. So go to the top left corner, look for looks, the sort of purple category, the sort of darkish purple category looks and look for something called next costume. That's the line that we want. So it's about a six down next costume drag that out and put it underneath wait one seconds all right so now we have this code here when green flag clicked forever wait one seconds next costume so let's click on go top right corner um the green flag and we should have this rocket ship that's changing its costume but it's changing it a bit slowly so let's make that a bit fast shall we 
So click on where it says wait one seconds and click on that one and type in zero and then a full stop, a dot and a one. That looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. It sort of looks like the rocket's kind of spinning around, which I quite like. There's little puffs of smoke. So you could try changing the amount of time that um, the rocket ship is spinning. You could make it zero if you wanted, but that spins a bit too quickly, I think, for my taste. You could make it a bit slower, 0 0.5, make it wait longer, but that's a bit too slow. So I like 0 0.1 seconds. You can, but you feel free to change that on your game if you like. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to put some controls into our rocket ship. We're gonna make sure that it uh, can move left and can move right. Um, so we need to create another forever loop. Uh, so to do that, we're gonna go to events. We're gonna drag out when green flag clicked. We're going to go to control and we're gonna drag out forever and put it underneath. Um, and we're gonna start putting in the code that controls our rocket ship here. Um, so first of all, um, let's uh, go, let's get an if then. So you should already be in control. So look about four down in the codes, in the control codes, and you should find an if then statement. Drag out that if then statement and put it inside forever. Um, and now go to the light blue category sensing. And we're going to get um, a code that keeps track of what buttons we're pressing on our keyboard. So look about seven down and you'll find key space pressed. Drag out key space pressed and you can see that this is like a six-sided shape. It fits nicely into that six-sided hole in between if and then. So if you put your mouse directly over the hole, it will drop the key space pressed right in between if and then. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that um, if you press left arrow, your rocket ship goes left. And if you press right arrow, your rocket ship goes right. So currently it says key space pressed, but we don't want it to say key space pressed. So click on that white triangle next to where it says space and then select left arrow. So now you should have when green flag clicked forever, if key left arrow pressed, then what we need to do now is we need to make the rocket ship go left. Now, if you are familiar with how coordinates work, you will already know the answer to this question. But um, we have two directions, two sort of axes that you can be going. Horizontally, which is left and right, and vertically, which is up and down. Now we only care about the horizontally at the moment because we're gonna have this rocket ship only able to go left and right. So go to the top left corner and click on motion. And so there are um, two different ways of moving, as I said, horizontal and vertical, sideways and up and down. And the way that Scratch refers to these two different directions is with either X or Y. Now, if anyone in chat knows the answer, what is the sideways, the horizontal, the left and right um, direction? Is it X or is it Y? I'll give you a few seconds to answer. So you can get your answers in chat now because the answer is it's X. If you change X, you will change your character, it will either move either left or it will move right. If you use a minus number, so minus and then a number, it will move left. If you use um, a number without a minus, so it's actually a positive number, it's an adding number, it will move right, which makes sense. You take away, you move left, you add, you move right. So we are going to, for the key left arrow, we're gonna make it go left, which means it needs to be a number that takes away. 
So have a look under your motion codes. Got it right? Well done, Aiden. Got it right? Um, so have a look under your motion um, codes. Look about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten down. And you should have one that's called change x by 10. Drag out that change x by 10 and put it inside the if left arrow pressed then. So then click on, so if we, if we now press left arrow, you'll notice that the rocket ship is moving in the wrong direction. It's moving right and I'm pressing left. So let's change that. We've got change X by 10. Click on the 10. Remember what I said? We need to go minus, and let's go minus five for now. So then once you have pressed, once you've got that in, you should be able to press left and your rocket ship will be moving left. Now to do this all again, with the right arrow, we could just go and get all the individual bits that we need for this bit of code, but let's just save ourselves some time, shall we? Look at where it says if. Right click on that, put your mouse on it and right click. And you should get three options. Duplicate is the option that we want. So just normal click on duplicate and you end up with this entire copy of all of all that code. Now we want this if to go directly under the other if. Make sure it's not stuck inside like this. We don't want that. We want it to go directly under. So now we should have these two nicely lined up blocks of code, but they do both do the same thing. Um, so we're going to change this second one. So look for if key left arrow, click on that white triangle next to left arrow and then change um, the key to right arrow, right arrow. And then we want uh, the rocket ship to actually move right when we press the right arrow. So click on that minus five underneath where it says if key right arrow pressed, click on that minus five and uh, type in just five. So now in our game, we should be able to go right and able to go left. So that's good. That's what we want. Okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is you can drag your rocket ship down a little bit to make it a bit lower. It's also very big, isn't it? So we're going to make it a lot smaller. So look on the right side of your screen in the middle and you should see all this information about your rocket ship sprite it calls it gives it its name sprite rocket ship it tells you a number for x and a number for y um and that keeps track of how far left and right your rocket ship is and how far up and down it is this number will keep track of where it is on the screen um, and it's also got show, so you could make it hidden or you can make it visible with this little eye or a little eye with a cross through it. And you've also got size. Click on size and it should say 100. Delete that 100 and type in 20. It seems very small, but I think I quite like that. You can make it a bit bigger if you want, but remember when it's, when you're screen is big like this, you probably don't want it to be very big. This seems pretty good, I think. All right, so. So we've got our rocket ship nice and small. You've also got it where you want it in terms of it being up or down. So you could drag it up if you wanted it to be a little higher or you drag it down a little bit. I want to be able to see the nice little animation of the little fire puffing out behind it. Um, and so what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to um, make a new sprite and we're going to draw this one. Okay, so our rocket ship's all done. So if we go to the bottom right corner, hover over that little cat face 
um, which says choose a sprite, but move up twice and you'll see it says paint. Click on paint and we have this um, little painting ability to uh, paint a new sprite. So if you've used this before, you'll probably be familiar with this, but if you haven't used it before, what I want you to do is I want you to go to, um, there's a circle tool. Look sort of in the left um, of your screen and you should see all these different tools, all these different painting tools. Click on the one that says circle. Um, and then in the top left corner, you can choose your outline, which is should be in black and your fill is in purple. Um, I'm going to click on that purple fill color and I'm going to change some of this so that it's yellow. So you can change, so because I, I want a sort of little yellow kind of little bullet. Um, a black outline is good, I'm happy with that. But you can choose whatever color you like for your bullet. I think I like yellow. So you can change some of these settings. Yeah, that looks like a nice yellow. Excellent. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw just a very little circle. And in fact, there's a way. If you draw a circle that you don't like, then you can just press delete on your keyboard and it goes away. And then there's a way to get a perfect circle as well. To do that, I think it's, let me test this. No, that's not it. What about, yeah, all right, cool. If you want to get a perfect circle, so it's not like an oval like this, what you need to do is you hold, need to hold down shift on your keyboard and then you can draw a little perfect circle and you want this to be very little. You want it to be very little. And that looks perfect. All right, so once you've drawn it, if you go to the bottom right corner, you should see a little magnifying glass with a little plus symbol in it, which allows you to zoom in. Whoops, don't want two circles, only want one. So now what we need to do is go to the top left corner um, and look for that little mouse symbol tool in all the painting tools and click on select. So yeah, select's the one that we want because we want to grab this circle and move it around. So now that we've got it grabbed, we can move it around and I want you to drag it so that the little cross in the middle of the circle shape goes right over that little crosshairs symbol in the middle of the painting screen. So now if I zoom out, bottom right corner, there's a little magnifying glass with a minus in it, you should see that this circle is right in the middle of our painting area. Now it's quite important that the circle is in the very middle of the painting area. So make sure that you got this nicely lined up with that little crosshairs in the middle of the painting area and that it looks good. All right, cool, that's nice. I like the size of this on the screen, just like a nice little bullet here. We also get, let's give this a name, shall we? It's called it Sprite One. So let's rename this. So look on the right in the middle and it says Sprite One. Delete that Sprite One and rename it Bullet. Uh, you could call it something else if you wanted. I'm just gonna call mine Bullet. All right, so got our Bullet Sprite. Let's go to the top left corner and click on code. We're going to code our bullets. So first of all, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to um, code our bullets so that um, they so there's more than one. We need more than one bullet. Um, if there's only, so the, you can see that there's currently only one rocket ship, but we only ever want there to be one rocket ship. But with the bullets, we need there to be more than one. So in Scratch, we can use something called clones, which is exactly what it sounds like, where we can make a bunch of copies of this one bullet. So what we need now is this bullet here, this one here is going to be the bullet that makes other bullets. It makes clones of itself. So we need to decide what this one does. So what we need it to do is we need this bullet to be invisible and we need it to follow around the rocket ship. And when we press a sp the space button, it's going to create a clone of itself. And that clone is going to go upwards in the screen until it hits a bat or until it hits the edge of the screen. Because remember, that's roughly what happens in this game when you 
hit fire, these bullets, they start off right um, on uh, underneath the rocket ship and they travel upwards until they hit a bat or until they hit the end of the screen. And then we need the clones to go away because otherwise we would just fill up our whole level with bullets. Okay. So first things first. Um, let's uh, make sure that the bullet always goes to the rocket ship, wherever the rocket ship moves to. So everyone go to events, top left corner, drag out when green flag clicked. Um, and let's get a forever loop out. So that's in control. So you should have now when green flag clicked forever. Um, and we're going to get an if then, just like we did before with the rocket ship. This is how we do a lot of our controls. We get if then, um, and what we'll do is while we're here, we'll grab a create clone of myself. So drag out that create clone of myself and put it inside the if then. So just like we did with our left and right controls, go to sensing, um, drag out key space pressed. Make sure it fits into that little hole in between the if and the then. All right, so now we've got forever, if key space pressed, then create clone of myself. So first of all, let's see. Uh, oh, now well, the other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure this bullet is always following the rocket ship. So go to the top left corner to click on motion and look four down and you should see something called go to random position. Drag that out and put it right underneath the line that says forever, but above the if. So make sure that it's underneath forever, but above if. So now we've got go to random position, but we don't want this ballot to go to a random position. We want it to go to something very specific. We want it to go to the rocket ship. So click on that white triangle where it says random position, and you should have the option to say rocket ship. All right, cool. So uh, let's hit go. And we should have this bullet is following around the rocket ship. That's good. That's what we want. And if we press space, it should make a long line of bullets. Now we haven't coded them to go up yet, have we? So all it's doing is it's just making these clones. And the clones have no instructions of what they need to do. So let's stop that game so all the clones go away. And let's put some instructions for what um, uh, for what, hap should ha what should happen to our cloned bullets when we create them. So let's make some space. Let's go to control and look very near the bottom. You should find something called when I start as clone. Drag out that when I start as clone. And then what we need to do is get a, a forever loop, put that right underneath when I start as clone. And then we're gonna get another if then, drag that out. And we're gonna go back to sensing. So this is gonna look kind of familiar, but we can do something a bit different here. Look at the very first sensing code. It's called touching mouse pointer. Drag that one out and put it inside that little six sided hole um, in between the if and the then. So now it should say when I, when I start as a clone forever if touching mouse pointer. Now I'll click on that white triangle next to mouse pointer and click on edge. So if touching edge then and then go back to control Look v all the way to the bottom of the control category on the left, that orange category, control, and drag out, delete this clone. And put that inside the if. So now hit go. Oh wait, we've doesn't, doesn't, uh, we've got, there's one more thing that we need to do. One more thing that we need to do. So remember, we changed 
X for the rocket ship, and which direction did it move? It moved sideways, it moved left, and it moved right. We want these bullets to go up. So what we want to do is we want to change Y. So go to Motion, the dark blue category in the top left corner. Look down until you find, it's near the bottom, sort of uh, change Y by 10. Grab out that change Y by 10 and put it right, um, probably doesn't matter too much, put it underneath the if, but right, make sure it doesn't get sucked up inside the if, make sure it's right underneath the if. Change Y by 10. Um, I'm also going to change it, uh, the 10, to a 5. So click on that 10, type in 5, um, just because I like it a bit more. But you can change this and make have the bullets go faster if you want. So let's hit go. And so now you should be able to create this long stream of bullets. And you'll notice what happens when they touch the edge of the screen, when they get to the very top of the screen. They delete themselves, they go away. If we didn't do that, then um, as I said before, the game would just fill up with bullets and um, would probably stop working very well. It would stop, it would stop, the, it would stop letting you make new clones because the, ge the game will only let you make so many clones. So first of all, while this looks very cool, it's also going to be a bit too easy if we can fire this fast. This is like a just continuous laser of utter destruction. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to create some code that means that there is a cooldown on us being able to shoot. Now, if you've done some previous um, of these lessons with me, you will uh, remember how to do this roughly. Um, but if not, just follow what I do. Um, and this will explain how to do a cooldown on an ability. So we often call these cooldown. Uh, if you've played sort of video games, you might be familiar with that word. It's basically the amount of time you must wait between doing something and doing it again. For example, jumping. If you're in a video game like Mario and you jump, you can't jump all the time, otherwise you would just float up into the sky. There's a cooldown on that, or perhaps it's something else, like maybe you must be touching the ground. But uh, shooting in a game, there's usually not a cool. There's usually a cooldown on that. Um, if you fire your weapon, you must wait a certain amount of time before you're allowed to fire it again. So I'm going to refer to this as a cooldown. Um, and we are, to do this, we are going to need to create a variable. Now a variable is something that changes. Um, it, in this case, is going to be a number that's going to change. It's going to count down. Um, so everyone go to the left uh, side where it says variables in dark orange in your categories on the left. So that very dark orange category of variables. And then look up in the top left corner where it says make a variable, a gray button. Click on that button. Um, so we're going to name this variable um shoot cooldown so yeah just type that in um and you shouldn't need to change any of this but uh just make sure you click uh yeah make sure that for all sprites is what's selected um so we're calling our variable shoot cooldown because the cooldown on how often you can shoot your your bullet all right, so now we've got this variable and you'll even see it in your game as a little top in the top left corner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that the shoot cooldown is always, it's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a timer that's always ticking down. And if it reaches below a certain point, if enough time has passed, then it will let you shoot. Um, so um, what we need to do is we need to always make this timer tick down, as I said. So look for change my variable by one, drag that out and put that right underneath where it says forever. So it says change my variable by one. Well, first of all, let's click this white triangle and select shoot cooldown. And then let's click on the one. 
and type in minus one. So now we've got forever change shoot cooldown by minus one. And you'll see that it's already doing it and it's going down into minus numbers and it's just going crazy. So that's fine. That's how, what it's meant to be doing. So then what we're going to do is we're going to look, look down in your code to where it says if key space pressed, then create clone of myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to events, uh, control, sorry, control the orange category on the left. And we're going to grab out another if then drag that out. Now this has to go somewhere very specific. This has to go so that the words if and then are right underneath the if key space pressed then. But create clone of myself is inside this new if then. So it should look like this. I'll make it nice and big on my screen so you can see it. Because we're going to, this is basically going to be asking two questions. The first question is, have you pressed the space bar? Remember, this is the code that makes our bullets fire. Have you pressed the space bar? Then the next question is, has the shoot cooldown gone all the way uh, to, has this timer ticked down enough that you can shoot again? So to do this, if you don't understand, that's fine. Just follow, just, just, just follow the, uh, the codes that I'm giving you. Um, to do this, we're going to need an operator. So have a look on the left side of your screen and you should see a green category called operators. Um, what you need is an a less than operator. Uh, who in chat knows what, which symbol is less than? If you know the answer, put it in chat. If you don't know the answer, I'm about to tell you. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down in the green operators codes. It is a little gap and then an arrow pointing left towards the gap and then a little gap with 50 in it. So pull that out and put it in our empty if then statement. Put it inside that little space that's made just for it. And you should now have if and then you've got basically a space less than 50. So asking the question, is this thing less than 50? So go to variables and grab, um, look at the very top, um, just second from the top, you should have a little orange circular thing that says shoot cooldown. That is our shoot cooldown variable drag out shoot cooldown and put it in that first little round gap that's just made just for it in our less than operator. So if you should now have if shoot cooldown less than and it says 50 but let's click on that 50 and let's say zero why not. So it's going to ask the question if shoot, shoot cooldown is less than 50 then do this. So the other thing we're going to look for, um, look in the top left corner for set my variable to zero. Drag out that set my variable and put it right above where it says create clone of myself. This is going to set the timer back up to 10, in fact. So click on that white triangle and click on shoot cooldown and then click on where it says zero and type in 10. So you should now have set shoot cooldown to 10. So what this does is every time we press space, it asks the question, has the shoot cooldown gotten down to less than zero? And if it has, put the shoot cooldown back up to 10 and make a clone of myself. So now you have the ability to control how rapidly you can fire these bullets. If you make that set shoot cooldown to 10, a larger number set, called, uh, set it to 20 maybe, they'll fire a lot less often. Like if I just try that, they'll fire a lot less often. If you want it to fire a lot faster, you could set it to a smaller number like five. I quite like 10. 
So this code is really useful. I know it might seem like a lot of fun just to have it so that you can fire infinitely fast like this, but it's kind of, imp uh, if you play a game that you can't lose, it's, it kind of gets a bit old after a while. Um, so making the game a bit harder is uh, generally a good idea. So now we've got this piece of code that basically is just this constant countdown timer that gets reset every time we shoot. And you can see it working away here, this variable. And it always goes back up to 10 every time we shoot. So that's pretty useful. Now we don't need to see this shoot cooldown timer. So look up in the top left corner. And you should see your shoot cooldown in the top left. And there's a little blue tick next to it. Click on that blue tick. And now we should have our shoot cooldown timer is now invisible to the person who's playing the game, which is true for most of the code. When you're playing the game like this, you don't see uh, all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Perfect. This is great. So um, we are pretty much done. It's actually going to be quite a short lesson today. The only thing that we need to do is just a few, a few little things that um, are going to make the game look a little bit nicer. Um, so we've got this random little floating bullet right here on top of the um, uh, rocket ship, right? So let's make it so that we can't see this bullet. Let's make it so that this bullet is hidden. Um, so go back to your code. Look for when green flag clicked. Look for when green flag clicked. This has to be in your bullet code. Go to the top left corner and click on looks, the purple category, and drag out hide and put it underneath when green flag clicked. So now when you click the green flag again, your original bullet, the one that's hovering on top of the rocket ship, is invisible. The problem is, so are all the clones. It's not shooting anymore. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the clones show themselves when they are created. So uh, go to when I start as clone. Look for that in your bullet code, when I start as clone. And look for show. It's near the bottom of the looks codes. So looks, the d purple category. Look near the bottom for show and put it right underneath when I start as clone, right above the forever. So now we should have these bullets coming nicely out of the rocket ship. So the only other thing uh, to change, if you wanted to, is you'll notice that these bullets are kind of coming out of the middle of the rocket ship. So what we could do is we could make it so that the bullets move a little bit more forwards, a little bit more up, I should say. So it looks like they're coming out of the tip of the rocket ship. So how would we do that? Well, we already know how to change uh, the bullets to make them go up. That's change Y by something. So go to motion, the dark blue category, and look for change Y by 10. Drag out change Y by 10 and put it right above where it says show. And now give it a try. So yeah, change Y by 10 is quite near the bottom of the blue motion codes. So this is, now the bullets are coming a little bit higher. That's a lot better, but we could even make that 10 a little bit more. So click on that change Y by 10, click on the 10, type in 15. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. That looks like it's coming right out of the, the, the top of the, uh, the rocket ship there. All right, cool. So now we've got our rocket ship working. We've got our bullets working. All we need to do now is get our bats working. And we're going to do that next week. How did everyone go? Any problems? All the codes working? This lesson's been a, a good one for beginners. So I know some of you guys, if you've done these before, are probably um, a little bit, um, uh, this might be a little bit simple for you guys, but it's nice to do, the, um, do some stuff that's useful for beginners. Um, 
And next week, we're going to program all the bats. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so as always, uh, we do these streams every Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, and we um, um, next week is going to be um, part two. Um, but we do different series, different games all the time. Um, City of Swan Libraries runs a bunch of different events. And if you want to uh, see for our physical events uh, what's happening, just go to Google. Uh, in fact, no, you don't even need to do that. Uh, look in the comments of this video and you will see there's a link that you can click on uh, which takes, us, takes you through to our Eventbrite page. And you can see all of the events that we've got coming up for the school holidays. There's a lot of cool stuff happening for the school holidays. We've got robotics events. We've got some physical coding events. They're just like this, but we're doing them face to face again. Um, and you'll also see what we're planning for after the school holidays as well, once all that stuff's ready to go. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can look at for City of Swan Libraries. Um, so I'm looking forward to next week doing some bat code with you. And we'll be able to get the game up to this state. And then I think we should be able to do a boss battle for part three. We'll see how, we'll see the, the bat code is a little bit complicated. So we'll see how far we get in the bat code. Um, but hopefully we get through it all. And uh, yeah, it should be good. Um, so as always, I hope you guys had fun. Um, shall see you next week um, and you can always leave uh, comments um, in these YouTube videos um, if you would like to give suggestions for what games you would like us to make next and so uh, until I see you guys next time stay safe be cool to each other and take care of yourselves we'll see you next time ninjas